This video is sponsored by Oculus. Over five years ago, my friend Austin Evans jokingly told me to fly to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas to try out what was then the Oculus Rift virtual reality prototype. Well, joke's on Austin, because I actually did. And I'll be honest, I wasn't 100% convinced. I mean, sure, the tech was amazing, but the resolution of the headset wasn't great, and without positional tracking, the experience needed to be played seated. But I could tell that it was the start of something special. And over the next two to three years, virtual reality skyrocketed forward with higher resolution headsets, full hand controller tracking, and room scale capabilities, which allow you to walk around inside of VR. Despite these massive advancements, VR has remained a relatively niche category, primarily due to its high price, gaming PC requirements, and need to wire all sorts of tracking sensors around your room and, and more. At least, uh, until now. Oculus Quest is the first VR headset that I think shares feature parity with many high-end PC VR headsets. No gaming PC, no wires, no weird setup. I honestly didn't really believe Oculus could deliver on this massive promise, but they did. This headset is mind-blowingly good, and it's going to single-handedly usher in mass-market VR adoption. Oculus has created a pleasant, albeit simple, unboxing experience with the headset, hand controllers, 15-watt power adapter for fast charging, and a very, very long USB-C cable. Oculus Quest has an internal battery large enough to game for about two to three hours, which is awesome, but it does make the headset a little bit on the heavy side at around 1.2 pounds. Luckily, the headset strap is excellent, with adjustability on both the sides and the top of the head, making extended play more than comfortable. Speaking of comfortable, the controllers, save for being a little bit front heavy, feel extremely pleasant and super sturdy, with the exception of the battery door. The controllers use a single AA battery, which isn't a bad thing per se, as they last an average of 24 hours on a charge. One minor issue I had though was that the battery door, which is magnetically attached, can become dislodged when playing intense games. It doesn't totally break immersion and it's easy to subconsciously train your hands, but it's a little bit bothersome at first. Oculus Quest uses a pair of fantastic OLED displays with a resolution of 1600 by 1440 pixels per eye, which is quite a bit higher than first generation desktop VR. As a result, the headset looks very sharp, text is readable, and the screen door effect, which happens because you're magnifying so closely to the displays, is reduced significantly. However, because it's a pentile OLED display, it won't appear quite as crisp as the new RGB LCD Oculus Rift S. Nonetheless, it's one of the best looking VR displays I've used to date, and that is high praise for a standalone headset. On the flip side, the refresh rate of said OLED displays is some of the lowest I've seen in any VR headset at 72 hertz. Now, 90 hertz and up has been kind of the norm for desktop VR. The lower refresh rate is noticeable when compared to PC VR with more aggressive motion smoothing. However, I think it's still absolutely acceptable. And even my grandma, who is prone to motion sickness, played with Quest for half an hour with no issues. However, your results may vary. Everything is powered by a Snapdragon 835 with four gigabytes of RAM. Now, I was a little skeptical about Oculus' decision to use a smartphone chip from 2017, but their optimization is nothing short of incredible. Motion tracking, computer vision, and actually playing games are all handled by this chip, and it does a stunningly good job. Talking storage. At launch, the headset comes in a 64 gigabyte variant for $399 and a 128 gigabyte variant for $499. However, with the average game weighing in at around one gigabyte, I'd recommend that most people opt for the less expensive headset. So I mentioned that this headset does full room scale tracking, just like most desktop VR headsets, but without the need for any external sensors. That's thanks to Oculus's incredible new InSight tracking system. All popular PC VR headsets to date have required external sensors. The Oculus Rift had specialized USB sensors that told the computer where the headset was located in the play space. Oculus Quest inside tracking is an inside out system, which uses four ultra wide angle sensors and computer vision to optically analyze the room that you're playing in, and then to position itself accordingly without the need for any external help. Setup is super easy. You put the headset on, it detects the floor level, and then you just draw a guardian wall based on your environment. The headset will remember previously defined boundaries each time you put it on, 
but because it takes less than 10 seconds to set up a new play space, Oculus Quest is the perfect VR headset to take to friends' houses and on the road. Because the tracking sensors are optical and on the headset itself, there are some limitations. For example, you need to play Oculus Quest in a lit room. It doesn't have to be a well-lit room, mind you, but it can't be dark. Additionally, the sensors can't see behind the headset. It attempts to use AI to estimate the trajectory of where your hand will return into the frame when it goes behind your head, and it does a pretty good job, but it isn't perfect. Throwing, archery, etc., all work great, but grabbing something from behind without looking at it, not so much. The tracking system on Quest isn't perfect, but it's very close, and it is far and above the best inside-out tracked headset I've used. I was running around inside a huge play space and couldn't get the headset to wig out, which was truly impressive. Good tracking is crucially important for immersive VR, and Quest handles it swimmingly. But hardware doesn't matter if there isn't the software experience to match. Luckily, Oculus didn't forget that. At launch, there are over 50 titles available, many of which free, that really highlight how impressive Oculus's optimization is. Now, Oculus allows developers to sell one copy of a game for both the Quest and Rift platforms, which they do for all Oculus Studios exclusives. But given the likely difficulty to maintain one game on two different architectures, Quest is ARM and Rift is x86, some developers have chosen to charge for each platform. Now, there are some games that support cross-buy, which means you can play them on both the Quest and the Rift S, but it's not for all titles, so it will be an adjustment for those that are already deep into the Rift's ecosystem. Game fidelity, however, is excellent. Less graphically intensive titles like Beat Saber and Superhot seem nearly indistinguishable from their desktop VR counterparts. And even Robo Recall Unplugged, which is an Oculus Quest launch day exclusive, is one of the best looking VR titles I've seen, period. Now, the majority of games don't have the anti-aliasing or shadow detail that the PC VR headsets have. And I mean, that's only sensical. You can't outcompute a desktop gaming GPU with a mobile SoC. But because Quest OLED displays are such high resolution, the clarity actually seems better in a lot of instances than my desktop VR headset powered by a GTX 1080 Ti. It helps that the catalog of games is highly respectable. And love it or hate it, some of VR's best titles are Oculus exclusives from the most graphically and mechanically polished wave shooter Robo Recall, to the art-heavy Journey of the Gods RPG, to the nostalgic sports scramble, to the fast online multiplayer shooter Dead and Buried 2. And with multi-platform system sellers like Rec Room and VRChat, the Quest has a swath of killer titles, with more to come if the headset sells as well as I think it will. Don't try to compare Quest to a mobile VR headset, even Oculus's own Go headset because you would be doing Quest a disservice. Within the scope of games available, it's 90% the experience that PC VR is, and in some areas, even better. For example, the wireless nature and high-resolution panels make watching video through Oculus TV and other apps the best video watching experience VR has to offer. I know this sounds nuts, but there were times that I completely forgot this wasn't being powered by a high-end gaming PC. And honestly, I think that's the best compliment I can give it. Well, folks, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please give it a like. If you didn't, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these, but most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.